You ready? Are oh, you ready, 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 ready? I'm ready. I've been in expectation. I've been um, just exuberant about coming back tonight with the hour of power. You know, we started on last Saturday night, and I talked about the church and what the church is and what the church isn't. And that has still been in my spirit. We're talking tonight. We're going into part two. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We're going into part two. The church is not a social club. If you have that in your mind, I need you to wipe it away. I need you to erase it out of your mind because God's church is not, it never was, and it never will be a social club. God never intended for that to happen. But somewhere along the road, uh, as we kept living, the emphasis have been shifted. And the church, a lot of churches, not talking about every church. So you have to be open-minded when you come to this broadcast. Now we're thinking today, Lord, you know, this broadcast has got to be for mature-minded people. People who are mature in you. People who are open themselves up. To the word of God and able to receive. So God's church, let me put it like this. God's church will never be a social club. I don't care how we try to make it a social club. It's not going to be one. God's church is going to be what he designed for it to be. You know, since I've had some downtime during this COVID-19 where just can't get out and do things like I normally do. Some people consider that something bad, but I consider that something good. God knows how to slow us down. God knows us how to put us in a place where we can just sit and we can reflect and we can think on some things. Well, since I've been down with going through this downtime of the COVID-19, it's caused me to really think about things. Have you been thinking about things? Well, I have been thinking about a lot of things and it's caused me to take some things that I have been thinking about and put them into its proper perspective. I've come to realize that perhaps some of you have too that what you thought was important is not important. What you thought mattered does not matter. What you put a lot of value on, there's no, it has no value. It's useless. It can't do you any good. So this has been... My time during the lockdown, during the time of just being in my home, doing the things that are necessary, because I go out, but I go out to do the things that are necessary, it's caused me to, to reflect. It's caused me to reflect on my life, reflect on values, reflect on everything that I thought was important. And one of those things I began to think about, I began to think about the church, what the church is, and what the church stands for. It has given me the chance to really look at what we call the church to see if it's really a church. Have you ever thought about that? Is the church really a church? Or is it a social gathering? And I say, God, you know, as I look around, I don't see where the church, some of the churches are not being what you call it to be. Some of the churches have now become a social club. It's become a social outlet. We have so much social activity going on. And as I said before, it's nothing wrong with having social activities. It's nothing wrong with having fellowships. But we should not get to the point where the social activities in what we call the church outweigh what God has called it to be. And I say, Lord, what have we been doing? You know, you need to stop. You need to think. What have you been doing? What have we been doing as a whole in what we call the church? And as you begin to look around, you will see that we are a far cry 
from what God called us to do, from what God called us to be. And for that reason, I feel that the COVID-19 has come to slow us down, to make all of us take a genuine look at what we call, quote unquote, the church. And I ask God, I can't, I can't talk about anybody else because everyone who knows me know that I am the first partaker of everything that I do and everything that I say. And I say, Lord, what have we been doing? What? What have we been doing? We've taken what God has deemed to be uh, the house of God, a place of assembly, and we have made it into a social club. I know that seems rough, that seems tough, that seems tight, but as we oftentimes say, it's right. We are not standing for what God has called us to stand for. One thing I know for sure, and that is the church of the living God. I'm not talking about the church of the dead God. I'm not talking about the church of the first deep freezer, but I'm talking about the church of the living God. I want you all to hear me really good. I'm talking about the church of the living God. It will never, never be a social club because God never called any house of assembly to be a church, to be a social club. We take things too far. We go in there. We want to do it our way. We don't want to do it God's way. We don't want to do what God has called us to do. And God said, no, I, I told you all a couple of weeks ago that the recess is over. And Lord is putting in my spirit. And God is saying to me more and more and more, what you call church has become a social club. It has become a social outlet. It does not stand for what I call it to stand for. And I said, Lord, help me. See, I, I, I can give this word out. But I can't change anybody. The change starts with me. The change always starts within. And I'm saying, Lord, help me. I've got to do better. I've got to be better. I've got to be what you have called me to be if I have to stand by myself. And I share it with my family, my, my children. I share it with my brother, my sisters. I say, right now, God has me in a place where I feel like sometimes I'm standing all alone. Because what I'm saying, I know it's not popular, and I'm not on here to get no get popularity. I'm not on here for you all to just love me, love me, love me, love me, love me. See, that's why sometimes we come on social media to get people to like us. So we can get the likes, so we can get the views. But if I don't get any likes, and if I don't get any views, I have to say what's in my heart. See, everything now is social. Give me some likes. I want some views. Get on in and preach the word of God. Let God give you likes. Let God give you views. And if you preach a relevant word, if you preach a word that's relevant right now for the body of Christ, to the body of Christ, God will give you views. I felt that in my spirit. So I'm not on here for popularity. I'm not on here for all these likes, but I'm on here to do what thus said the Lord. I feel sometimes that God don't let these people think I'm anti, because I'm not anti nothing. I just stand for truth. And you know me, you know I stand for truth. I don't, I don't butter it, come on. I don't put butter on the gospel. I don't put sugar on the gospel. I don't put cream on the gospel, because God told me to preach it in season, Preach it out of season. You all hear me right now. We got too many people because they are social. They won't preach the word of God. I got to get on this paper, but they won't preach the word of God. They'll preach so people can say, oh, you preach the real word. You preach the good word. They'll dance all over the floor, but they haven't preached. Oh, God, help me. They haven't preached the word of God. They preach what they want to preach. They preach a feel-good message, and you go home thinking you have heard a word from God, and all you've heard is a word from the flesh. We're too social. Pastors can't preach because they're social now. They're social with Mary. They're social with John. And if they tell the truth, John will walk out. Mary stop paying her tithe. Well, let them stop. Y'all don't hear me right now. If they stop paying tithes, 
If they stop giving an offering, if they walk out the door, God will send somebody else to take up the slack. We've, come, we've become too social. I want everybody in the church to love me. I'm not going to preach and teach them about sin. I'm going to let them go ahead right on. Do you understand we have gotten so social until people are coming into the house of God and they are going straight to hell through the church? I'm not cursing. I'm not cussing. I'm saying what's in the Bible. They will go straight to hell through the church because we are too social now. We don't want to lift up our voices. We don't, God said, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression. But because I'm in this social club inside this church and I got these people in here, I can't show them their transgression. I'm going to let them do what they want to do. But God said, no, my church is not a social club. My, my church is not a social avenue. God didn't call us to get chummy with people to the point where we can't preach the truth. Y'all better hear me right now. He didn't call us to get so comfortable and, and so relaxed that we don't show people where they are wrong. But because we want them in here, we want them in this body, we sell them for anything. That's a social club. A club will sell them for anything. As long as you pay your dues, you all don't hear me. A club will sell it for anything. You pay your dues. You come to the meetings. You do what you're supposed to do in here. And you can keep right on going. Well, this is not a club. Mm. This is not a club. This is a house of God. Y'all said it was a house of God. So why are we making it into a social club? There has got to be a distinction between what we call church and a social club. There has got to be a distinction. Our churches should not resemble. Our churches should not function. Our churches should not behave as a social club. What is the, what is the distinction? You all think about that really good. What is the distinction between the house of God and a social club. And I began to sit before God early this morning. And the Lord placed in my spirit, he said, you know what's going on? The social club aspect has crept into the churches. Y'all hear that? The social club aspect has crept. I didn't say it came full force because if it came in there full force, somebody would have recognized. You must understand when the enemy is coming, to overtake you and to overthrow you, he doesn't come full force, but he slowly creeps upon you. And when he gets himself in there, you don't even realize how he got there. I'm thinking now about the WWW, the World Wide Web, how the enemy will get us caught up in that web. And when you get caught up in the web, you can't get out. Well, what is God saying? We done got caught up in the social aspect of the church and he crept in there slowly and he's gotten himself in there and what we thought was church mm, is nothing but a social club. God is tearing down social clubs. When the COVID-19 came, the bars had to close. All these um, football game, baseball game, basketball game, all these attractions had to close. God had it fixed, but we had to go outside and have church. God closes down things that are not deemed necessary. Let me let that soak in. So I see what God is doing during the midst of this COVID. God is calling for us, who is the church, to get back to the basics to get back to doing what he has called us to do. The structure and the meaning of the church has become watered down. I don't hear nobody. I told you this broadcast is only for mature audience, for audience who desire to grow, for audience who desire to have the truth. The church has become so watered down. The meaning has become so watered down because so many, are trying to fit in with the world. They are trying to fit in to the world and what's going on in the world. So they take the church now and make the church uh, become a social club. But do you understand that God never called us to fit in? God called us to come out. Come on. He didn't tell us to fit in. He did not tell you to do what everybody else is doing. And I said it on last week. 
So many times we get caught up in what's going on down the street and what's going on down the street may not be what God has called you to do, but because it looked good, you'll jump on the bandwagon and do what they are doing. God said, I didn't call you to fit in. That's why I said today, the other day, I said, Lord, I, I feel like the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger don't have anybody to walk with them. The Lone Ranger don't have anybody to talk to. So right now, I'm the Lone Ranger. Because I know this is not popular. I know pastors won't like what I'm saying. But you know, at the end of the day, God is my boss. God pays me. And God takes care of me. When God gives you a voice for the voiceless, you have to just go on. So I said, this is not going to be popular. People will come up against you. They'll say all kind of things. But the churches, they'll all become on a social club. Just take a look. Just take a look. Just take a look around you and see what you see. You'll see this woman here is not telling the truth. You can't identify a church now from a social club. The resemblance is getting to be too close. And anytime we start resembling in the world, it's time to shut it down. It's time to tear it down. It's time to be a real church or no church at all. It's time out for being a play, play church. We don't have to go to church or go to the social club. If you desire to go to the club, if you desire to do what the club is doing, go to the club. Y'all don't hear me right here. Go to the club. Don't bring the club mentality into the church. Don't bring the club attitude into the church. Don't bring the club dress into the church. Be a real church. If you got to go to the club, go to the club and don't take the house of God and make it into a social club. Churches right now, they're trying to raise their appeal to others. See, I got my church and I got to raise this appeal. I've got to make my church appeal to all these people. We got Generation X. We got all these kids out here and I've got to make my church appeal to these people. God is not in the business of making his church. See, y'all got to distinguish with this. I need to pull these glasses off now. Is it your church or is it God's church? Is it your church or is it God's church? See, God didn't take his church and make his church appealing. There's nothing appealing about it. He's not trying to dress it up. He's not trying to make it fancy. He's not trying to make it stand out as the best church in your city, the best church in your state, the best church in the country. God is not in that kind of business. But we get a church and we say, our, our, we take it on ownership. We own the whole nine yards and we don't understand it's supposed to be God's church. So I say, let's give the church back to God. I don't hear nobody. I clear, Lord, don't get me in trouble. I don't hear anybody. Let's take this church and call it God's church. Call it. If it's going to be a church, call it God's church. Come on. You may go there. You may be a part of it, but it's God's church. And when you understand that the edifice that you go into is God's church and it belongs to God, you'll stop trying to make it appealing. And you're not trying to make it appealing to the flesh, um, to the spirit realm, but you are making it appeal to the flesh. You are drawing the flesh. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. You are drawing the flesh. You are not drawing the spirit of God. You are so tuned in to make it appealing until you are reaching out to the fleshly things of this world and you are not reaching out to the spiritual things. So remember, it's God's house. When you look at it as being God's house, would you do the things that you're doing inside that house? Y'all don't hear me. If it's, if it's really God's house to you, would you allow those things to go on in God's house? Some of you wouldn't let that go on in your own house. I don't hear nobody. Some of the things that we have going on in the church, because we have made the church a social club, we wouldn't even let that go on in our house. Come on. We'd have a hissy fit that some of the stuff that was going on in church was going on in our house. But yet we'll go to what we call the house of God and we'll let it and everything go on because I'm appealing now. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. See what's going on? People want their churches, their churches, 
their appeal to be the drawing card instead of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got to get my big chandelier. The clubs got big chandeliers. Social clubs got big chandeliers. We got to have all this stuff in there. And we are trying to make it appealing. We want the building to draw the people. I told you all last week, the Bible said, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. He didn't tell us to lift up chandeliers. I don't hear anybody. I know we want nice stuff. I'm not against nice stuff, but I'm trying to drive a point home. The chandeliers uh, should not be lifted up. The sound system should not be lifted up. The club got to have that good sound system because when they come in there, they got to be able to dance. And we, we got to have a good sound system in the church. I know our voices got to be heard, and I pray y'all getting what I'm saying. But we might be pattering too much. We're trying to draw <laughs> the world into what we call church, and Lord help me. But what we're drawing them into is just another image of the world. Another image of a club that goes by the name of a church. God is not in the club saving business. He's in the soul saving business. I see them going in the clubs. I don't see them coming out saved. They go in there. They might not be drunk when they go in, but when they come out, they're drunk. Come on. We used to go to church a long time ago, and the Holy Ghost would get on us so that we would just be drunk in the spirit. And they would have to put us in the car and we would come home worshiping and praising God. See, we don't see that happening anymore. Why? Because of the social outlet. Mm, 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 mm. It's become a social outlet. So your building should not be the drawing card to get people to come. Your light shouldn't be what you use to attract people. Your vestibule shouldn't be what you use to attract people. Your sanctuary shouldn't be what you use to attract people. Your offices and your bathroom, y'all hear me? Huh? Shouldn't be what we use to attract people. People ought to be attracted because the gospel is being preached. They ought to be attracted because the anointing of God is flowing in this place. They ought to be attracted because somebody's getting healed. Someone's getting saved. Someone is getting delivered. They ought to be attracted in there. If, if I got to sing a song off tune, but because the anointing is flowing through. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's what should be attracting people. And I say, God, it's time for us to understand. It's time for us to realize that the church as a whole, we strayed, we strayed. And God has given us some downtime during this COVID-19 so we can think about it. Let's, let's think about it. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. I got to get mine bigger. I've got to get mine better. I can't let you out do me down the street. See, a social club would be in competition. A church of the living God is not in competition. Come on up in here. But a social club is in competition. I'm going to have the best music than that club down the street. I'm going to get the best dancers than that club on the street. I'm going to have all this in the house of God. Lord, help me. I know this type tonight. I know because I sat in this chair. I didn't know everything I'm going to say. I'm saying right now, ouch. I'm saying, Lord, help me. I'm saying, Lord, deliver me. I'm saying, Lord, set me free. I'm saying, Lord, I can't do all of this stuff. If I have to be the Lone Ranger, I choose to be the Lone Ranger because I'm going to move. I'm going to move. I'm going to move, people. When people... Come to your church, your house of worship. They shouldn't come just to feel good. I know when I go there, buddy, I'm going to feel good. But what's about, let's get saved. Come on. Let's get delivered. Let's get set free. Let's see some changes in our life. We shouldn't say, I'm going over there. I'm going to Jane's house of worship. I'm going to John's church because, honey, when you go in there, you're going to feel good. What you mean you're going to feel good? We now go to church to feel good. We go to church so we can make a change in our lives. You don't. You go to the social club to feel good. But when you go to the house of God, you go going because you're looking for something better. You're looking because you want to change some things that's going on in your life. When we turn our churches into a social club, they come in there to feel good. They don't come to get delivered. 
Because nobody not telling them what to do to get delivered. Just like a bar. You go to the bar, you sit on the counter, you get your wine, you get your drink, and you sit there and you, and you feel good. And you get back up and you go home. But when you come to the house of God, we shouldn't go say, I'm going to feel good. This is not a bar. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is not a bar. This is not a nightclub. This is the house of God. We will not let it be a social club. Don't you understand people are dying? Don't you understand that people need to be saved? Don't you know that people need Jesus in their life? You don't have time to let this be a social club, people. Come on up in here. We don't have time for it to be a social club. It's got to be the house of God. God never deemed it as a social club. Um, club. He deemed it as what we say the house of God. That's going to be some more teaching down the road. I got to help you all understand what a church is and what a church is not. I tell you, I'm not anti, but I am for the Lord. Uh -huh, I am for the Lord all the way. I mean right all the way. Come on. It's not. It's not a social honest club. Do you understand that the church should never be? Do you understand that the building should never be a drawing card for your church? What if you can't afford those chandeliers? Come on. What if you can't have that beautiful vestibule? Come on. What if you can't have a water fountain out front? What if you can't have all those fancy flowers? Come on. That should not be your drawing card. But honey, I'd rather be where the anointing is. I'd rather be where the power of God is in operation. I'd rather be where God is doing something on the inside. That's the drawing card. Come on. Do you see how far things have twist, gotten twisted? Do you see how far things have strayed away from the true meaning of the church? We have placed too much emphasis on the physical appearance of what we call the church. And we have not placed enough emphasis on the spiritual aspects of the church. Help us, Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, help us right now. Put too much emphasis on the physical aspect. And we have not dedicated ourselves to the spiritual aspect of the church. The message of Jesus Christ should be our drawing card. I'm not going to give you a potluck supper. I'm sorry. I'm not going to give you soup and sandwiches. I'm sorry. I'm not going to play you a bingo game. I'm sorry. I don't hear nobody. Huh? See, y'all, y'all, do y'all understand what I'm talking about? I want to know, do you really understand what I'm talking about? What we do to draw pe people? Come on. I know we feed people. I know we're going to take care of people. I'm not against that, but that's not the drawing card. What if you don't have any food? Come on. What if you don't have any food to give people? What if your church does not have that to give? So you can't draw people on that. You better get somewhere and get endued with the Holy Ghost. You better get it so that it comes out of your mouth speaking in tongues and overflowing. Come on. It's time for the real power to come back to God's house. The club doesn't have any power. They'll walk in the club right now and have a gun. And when they start shooting them bullets, they don't have anybody's name on it. Come on. We about to make that the house of God right now. Come on. But it ought to be when we come in there, we feel the fire. We feel the anointing of God. That old mother sitting there. And that mother is saying, that old deacon is praying. That preacher is preaching the unadulterated word of God. Because he's not caught up in the building. Hallelujah. He's not caught up in the structure of the building. He's caught up in the Lord. And I'm here to tell you right now, because I feel it coming. It's time to get caught up in God. We've gotten caught up in the wrong stuff. We've gotten caught up. And having all this fine, luxurious stuff. Come on up in here. God doesn't dwell in building. God dwells inside of us. And I tell you right now, say, God, this what you gave me will not be a social club. I'm not a social outlet. Uh, I will not be one, God. If I got to stand by myself, I'll stand and be what you called me to be. I'm praying I got some help on this Facebook tonight. I'll stand and be what God has called me to be. I won't stand for a social club. I won't be known as a social club. I won't be known as I'm just here to tell the gospel. I'm here to tell the gospel truth. Don't you understand 
What you do in the, in the flesh is not going to last. We can do all this stuff, have all our social activities, have all our social clubs, everything that we want to socially, but it's not going to last. The only thing that's going to last is what we do for Jesus Christ. All this other stuff, it's not going to last. It's going to fade away. It'd be like Solomon. He looked up and he said, everything was vain. Everything was vanity. Everything I thought I was doing in the name of the Lord, I found out it's vanity, vanity, vanity. I'm all talking right. What we're doing to COVID-19 is causing all of us should be to look around to see if what we're doing. Is it profiting anything? Are we succeeding in anything? Are we moving forward with anything? Oh, God help us. But we, if, you, if you're real, see what I'm learning, people don't want to be real. They want to walk around and fool themselves and they don't want to come clean. That's what I want to say. They don't want to come clean with themselves. Well, this COVID-19 is causing us to become clean with ourselves, to see where we stand, to see what we stand for, and to see if we are on the right course with God the way we're supposed to be. If, if you are operating as a social club, you are not on course. You are not on course. The only thing that will last... Is what we do for Christ. Only what you do for Christ will last. And I thank God. The social club in the houses of God will not last. It will be done away with. The message of Jesus Christ needs to be preached. Not my message. <laughs> Not your pastor's message. Come on. Sometimes you can, pastors don't stay before God long enough to get a, a relevant word. Come on. I tell them about using Google and Wikipedia. Y'all don't hear me. Wikipedia put anybody's opinion up there and you'll go preach something Wikipedia said and won't even be preaching the truth. You got to spend quality time before God. Come on. You don't have to worry about watching that favorite TV show when you got to deliver the word of God. You've got to get a message that's going to be relevant. To the people for the time that we are living in now. And the message of Jesus Christ is first of all telling us to repent. Come on. The social club not going to tell you, tell you to repent. Why? Because the social club wants you to keep coming. Oh God, I, I felt that Holy Ghost. The social club is not going to tell you to repent. Because the social club wants you to come every week to drink from that bar. To get your, see, get your martini. Y'all got to forgive me because I don't know too much about this. But get your martini, get your cold beer, or uh, whatever kind of whiskey or liquor that you might drink. The social club not going to tell you to repent. Ooh, God help me, Holy Ghost. Because if you go in the social club and I tell you to repent, and I tell you to get it right, you're not coming back. So we're in the house of God now, and we are the social club, and we're not going to tell you to repent because if I tell you, buddy, you got to repent of your sins, you got to ask God to forgive you, you will stop coming. You will withdraw that money. I'm not going to that church because they're telling me I got to repent. I'm not going to pay another dime in that offering. See, that's a social club. But when you are in the true church, when you are in the house of God, you're going to tell people you got to repent. Come on. That's what Jesus, that was the message of Jesus Christ. He came to get people saved. Come on up in here. He didn't come to make us social. He wants us to be cordial. He wants us to be loving. He wants us to be kind hearted. He wants us to be nice with each other. But he did not call us to be social to the point to where we can't preach the gospel. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. Help me right now. Help me right now. Help me. Help me, God. He didn't call us to be that social. But Jesus' message is repent. You go to the club, they're not going to say repent. You come to the house of God, nobody's telling you to repent. they saying, go ahead, boy. Go ahead, girl. You got it going on. You go to the club, go ahead, boy. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead, woman. You got it going on. Well, baby doll, let me help you. You don't have it going on. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. I thank God for the COVID because it's making me stronger. He I thank God for the COVID-19 because it's strengthening me. 
It's helping me to become stronger in my walk with God. And God is letting me know you won't walk on no shallow water. You won't walk on timidity. You will not walk fearfully, but you'll open up your mouth, my God. And you'll speak what I give you to speak. And I don't worry about it, people. <laughs> I, really, I, I really don't. I really don't because God told me a long time ago. He said, you take care of my business, girl. I'll take care of yours. And God doesn't miss a beat. That's why I'm not scared. Come on. The club doesn't tell you to get right. The church doesn't tell you to get right. They let you do anything you want to do because you're bringing that 50, 60, 70, $80, or $100 or whatever you're bringing. They're not going to tell you to repent when I'm on this live tonight. Ha <laughs> ha. Woo, shake it out. I'm on this live tonight, and I'm telling all of us, we got to repent because we're in the house of God. We are in the assembly of God. We are the body of Christ, and everything not going on here. This is not a social club. This is not Burger King. You can't have it your way. We're not holding the lettuce and the pickles and the tomatoes and putting cheese on nothing. Ooh. God help me. God help me. God help this girl. I pray you praying out there. I pray somebody on here praying. I pray y'all to leave me in the deep water by myself, but if it did, I'm going to swim this time. Hallelujah. I'm going to swim, baby. I'm going to swim. I'm determined. I'm going to swim in this water. Hallelujah. Because we don't hear enough about stuff like this. That's why we have become a social club, a social entity. And we are not the house of God. We are not the house of God. Jesus told them to repent. He began to preach the message of repentance. He said, for the kingdom of heaven ha, is at hand. He didn't tell anybody to repent so you, so you can go to the social club, so you can go to the country club, so you can go to the golf club, so you can go to all these different clubs. Come on, people. I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help all of us on tonight. Hallelujah. He didn't tell us to repent to keep on doing what we're doing. That's the message. He didn't say tell them to come on in here and let them do what they want to do. Because I got to have some members. I can't let you have more members than I can't let the church down the road have more members than I have. I can't let the church down the road raise more money than what we raise on a Sunday. So I'm social. Come on. I'm social now, but I'm going to have everybody sitting in here. I'm going to have everybody loving me. I'm going to have everybody giving their money because I'm social. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ooh, God, have mercy, have mercy. It's time to get rid of this watered-down version of the church with all of its social appeals. Come on. You gonna work yourself to the bone trying to make something so appealing. Come on up in here. You'll work yourself down to the bone trying to make it appealing to the Jones, trying to make it appealing to the Smith. But what are you what are you trying to make appealing to God? I don't hear nobody. What are we trying to make appealing, appealing to the Lord? Come on. I don't hear nobody. I really don't hear anyone on this live. What are you doing to make it appealing to God? It's time to get rid of this watered down virgin. I say be a real church or close the doors. Come on. Be a real bona fide church, not a social club. If you got to be a social club and go by the name of a church, close it. Close the door. <laughs> Don't have me come and put my money in the social club. I'm not going to put mine there. Let me, let me back it up. I'm not going to put mine there. Come on. I'm not going to invest my tithe. I'm not going to invest my offering in a social club. If I want to be pay dues, I'll find a club to go to. I'll pay my dues, my membership dues, to a real club that's going by the name of a club. Oh, Lord. And so we don't be careful. We're not careful. What we call in church is nothing but a social entity. And we're going in there. We're paying tithes and offers. You're just giving dues. Just paying dues. I, I'm real. Just giving dues. Well, honey, my hard-earned money can't pay dues in a social club. I'm here to tell you. God is not pleased when we do that. Come on. 
And people say doing all this in the name of the Lord. We need to be quiet. <laughs> Ooh, she. We need to be quiet. Come on. We need to be quiet. Come on. I'm telling you, we're declaring war on these social club churches. We are declaring war tonight on these social club churches. It's time to get back to the basics and the fundamentals of the church. Come on. Time to get down to the basics and the fundamental. Why does it exist? What is the purpose of your house of assembly? Now, if no one has ever made that plain to you, you need to ask them. Lord, Jesus, if no one has ever made it plain to you why your church exists, what is your church for, what is your church trying to accomplish, you need to ask them. I'm going to let that settle. You need to ask them. When you go to a club, they at least tell you something. They tell you what they're out there for. You go in the Kiwanis Club. We know they're out there trying to help people get eyeglasses. They're trying to help people. What is the purpose of where you go to worship the God? Come on. What is the mission of your particular house of worship? If they can't tell you, you need to evaluate it and see if you are in a church or if you are in a social club. There is a difference. <laughs> woo! I felt like I felt like saying, woo! Ah, there is a difference. We got to get to the basics. Why do we go? What do we stand for? What are we accomplishing? Am I just going for my social activity to have my social time, to drink my tea and to eat my sandwich and to have my soup in the winter time? What is the reason? Come on, people. I want to open up your mind. I want to give you something to think about. I want to take you to a deeper level in thinking it's time to move off of elementary. Come on, people. We are moving to a higher ground. We are moving to a higher level. The COVID-19 has dictated that we can't stay where we've been staying. I don't hear nobody. <laughs> the COVID-19 has dictated that we can no longer walk the way we have been walking. The COVID-19 has dictated that we must make the changes in what we have been doing. The COVID-19 is a mandate to get rid of social clubs. Come on. Get rid of the social clubs in the house of God. The church is not called to be a social club. We who make up the body of Christ are the ecclesia. And I emphasized that last week, so let's emphasize it again. The church that we know, I'm talking about us, the body of Christ. Come on. We are the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia means that we have been called out. Ecclesia, we have been called out. Called out of what? Called out of the world. <laughs> called out of everything that's not like God. Called out of the clubs. So if we are the Ecclesia and God has called us out of everything that's not like him, everything that does, that does not represent him, why are we still in a church that's acting like a social club? I don't hear nobody. <laughs> I don't hear anybody. I need somebody to get on board. I need you to come on up in this room. He said, come out. We are the Ecclesia. We've been called out. We're supposed to be an ambassador. We are a representative of the kingdom of God. We are Jesus' ambassador on the earth rim. We have been called out of the clubs. But yet, some edifice, some places, I'm not talking about everybody, so you got to rightly divide. So many churches have become the club until oh, people are not being called out. But I tell you right now, God is calling you. If you are born again, if you are a Christian, if you are a believer, you have been called out. You are part of the ecclesia. And the ecclesia does not rub world, does not rub shoulders with the world. I don't hear nobody. 
See, what it is, we want to be in the church, but we want to rub shoulders with the world. And that's not who we are. We're in the world, but we are not of the world. This world is not our home. We are here to make a difference. Your church is here to make a difference spiritually, not socially. It can help us on different levels. So don't, un don't misunderstand. I tell you, this is for mature audience only. Come on. We can help us in the realms of knowing how to be social, but it didn't call us to be social. God is not putting us in a house of God to be social. They say, come out from among them. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. That's what the ecclesia. God has called us to come out. And I thank God I'm coming out. We are set apart. We are chosen. We are of the royal priesthood. We are a peculiar people. We do not rub shoulders with the world. I don't hear anybody. Come on. I don't hear anybody. I just need somebody to come get on this train and ride. He's called us out. He set us apart. Come on. I'm telling you. I say, God, I said today, God, isn't it strange that we are trying to bring people out of the world and then we bring them into the church and the church resembles the world. I don't hear nobody. I say, God, it's strange. We are trying to call people. We are trying to bring people out of the world. And then when they come into the places of assembly, when they come into what we call the house of worship, it resembles the club. I don't hear nobody. Huh. I don't hear anybody. It resembles the club. It has a club mentality. Uh huh. It resembles the nightclub. Uh huh. And then we don't. Uh, then we can't understand why nobody's getting saved. Come on. Why no one is getting healed. Come on. Why nobody's getting delivered. Come on. Why nobody's being set free. Why? Because we have called prelate them from the club and bringing them into the house of God, which looks like a club. I don't hear nobody. I don't hear anybody. God does not operate in a church that operates in a club mentality. God does not operate in a church that operates with a club mentality. God only operates through a body of believers. Come on. People that have been set apart. People that have been chosen. People that know who they are in God. God does not operate in a club mentality. That's why we are not seeing the miracle. That's why we are not seeing the wonders. That's why we're not seeing signs. That's why we are not experiencing the healings and the deliverance. Because the house that we call the house of God has become a social entity. Good God Almighty. Ha, woo. My, 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 my. Ha, woo. I felt that. I felt that in the Holy Ghost. You pulling them out. Trying to get them out of the club. Trying to get them from smoking reefers. Y'all don't hear me. Trying to get them from snorting. Trying to get them from drinking. And you bring them into what we call the house of God. And they come in there and they look around and they can't tell they're in a church. Shame on all of us. Lord, help your people. <laughs> help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, help us, help us, help us, help us. Help us, God. God does not operate in any clubs. Y'all better hear me. God does not operate in clubs. He does not operate in club mentality. Come on. God is a spiritual being. And the Bible clearly says that he that worships him must worship him in spirit and truth. It didn't say worship him in our flesh. Come on up in here. But we have to worship him in our spirit. We have to worship him in truth. God is not moving in these makeshift places. I hate to tell you. I hate to tell you, but God does not operate in makeshift places that call themselves a church. He don't operate in makeshift stuff. God only operates in what's genuine. God only operates in what's pure. If you want to see God brought back to your house of worship, stop making it a social club. Ah, uh, we have been called out of the world. We have been called out of the world. We're not called to blend in. Do I have any ecclesias on this live? Do I have any ecclesias on this replay? Do I have any ecclesias on Periscope? 
We have been called out of the world. If you have been called out of the world, you need to make some noise on here. I got to get ready to get off here. You got to make some noise on this place. We have been called out. I won't be a social club. The church is not a social club. Come on. It's not. It's not a social club. And I'm sorry that down through the years, people just got caught up in being too social. Got caught up in trying to do everything like everybody else is doing. Got caught up in all this stuff. And we have taken the house of God. And God looking at us in these churches and saying, you're nothing but a club. And my spirit can't operate in this stuff. Don't you understand? God is pure. God is holy. And God can't come in there. Do y'all hear me on this live? Huh? Do you really hear me on tonight? Come on, people. I need you all to come on. Huh? God said no. God said no. And I said, God, if I got to walk by myself, hallelujah, I'll walk by myself. We made the church a social club by trying to appeal to others, trying to, trying to get people to, to come on in the house of God. We're trying to make it appeal to the flesh. Come on, people. That fleshly appeal. When people look, that flesh is getting comfortable. The flesh is getting relaxed. And, and we want to come on in there then. But we got to understand, I told you a few minutes ago, this fleshly stuff is not going to last. Only what you do. For Christ will last. Uh-huh. Don't you understand that these fleshly things not going to get you into heaven? I hope y'all understand <laughs> that those places of worship is not going to get you into heaven. I, I hope y'all understand that. It does not guarantee you a front seat. It does not guarantee you that you're going to get into heaven. And that day of judgment, you stand before God, you say, Well, Lord, I went to the biggest church in South Carolina, North Carolina, um, Virginia, New York, New Jersey. I went to the biggest church. God said, You went to a club. Woo! Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. I don't want God to tell me I've been to the club and I thought I was going to a church. Y'all, y'all don't hear this old girl. Come on, people. Y'all don't hear me on this live. I'm not pouring out this for nothing. Huh? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And God will look and say, honey, what you thought was church, it was nothing but a, a club and a masquerade. Uh-huh. But God is pulling off these masks from these churches. We walking around with a mask because we got to have protection. But do you understand that God is unmasking the church right now? I hope you all hear me. Do you understand that God is unmasking the church right now? And people are going to know what it stands for. And people are going to know what you have been perpetrating to be a house of God is not a house of God. I don't hear nobody. Let me stomp my feet. Come on. I got to hit one more thing and I'm going to get off this thing. Because this thing is good, 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 good. I pray you all getting some out of this tonight. Because honey, I feel like running. Ha <laughs> ha. I feel like jumping all around this house right now. Come on. I feel like giving God glory right now. See, that's what I'm trying to tell people. People waiting to get inside a building. They got to have that guitar. They got to have that keyboard. They got to have them drums. And they got to have a tambourine before they get happy. I'm getting happy right now. Come on, come on, come on. I'm getting happy right now. I get happy off the word of God. Hallelujah. Woo, shake it up, I get happy. <laughs> I get real. I get real happy. I get real. I, let, me, let me make it country. I get real happy. I get real happy. I get real happy off the word. Come on. I get real happy off the word when I feel the word is moving. When I feel the word is doing what it's supposed to do. See, God is sending this word over this Facebook live right now, over Periscope, over the YouTube. This word is going. And somebody... Woo! It's getting a word that's delivering. Somebody's getting a word that's setting free. Somebody's getting a word that's bringing about a change. Somebody's getting a word that's calling change to fall off of them right now. I don't hear nobody. <laughs> Woo! Shit, can that up, Osa? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the word of God. See, I'm talking about the word. I'm not talking about Wikipedia. I'm not talking about Google. But I'm talking about the word of God, a bona fide word of God, a true word of God, a word that's relevant to the time that we're living in. I'm talking about the word of God. Huh? 
The word of God is not bound by time. The word of God is not bound by space. The word of God is not bound by the COVID-19. The word of God is not bound by the coronavirus. The word of God is not bound. Woo! Let me calm down. Calm down. I got to go, Lord. Give me a few more minutes. <clears throat> calm down. Let me try to calm down. Because <laughs> I do... No, I'd act dignified if I got to act dignified. Huh. But I ain't trying to, I'm not trying to act dignified. See, I'm not a club. I, I don't come on here to entertain you. Huh. I don't come on here to act dignified and sedity. I don't come on here to cross every T and dot every I. I don't come on here to get the subject and verb correct. Come on, I'm not a club, baby. Huh. Not by a long shot, not by a short shot. I don't come on here to tickle the ears. Come on. I don't tickle toes. I don't tickle feet. Come on. Come on. Come on. But we're here for the word of God. I said I'm not here to entertain you. That's what we're going to close with tonight. I want you all to understand that the church is never supposed to be represented or known as the entertainment capital of the world. <laughs> Say it again. Yes, Lord. God never intended for his church to be known, his church, the body of Christ, to be known as the it, as the entertainment capital of the world. Y'all hear me really good. <laughs> the house of God is never supposed to be recognized as the entertainment capital. Of the world. And I'm afraid what we have done, we're trying to make it the entertainment capital of the world. Because you come to my house of God, you come to my place of worship, buddy, we got it going on. I got the best keyboard player. Come on up in here. I have the best drum player. I have the best guitar player. I got the best horn blower. I got the best tambourine beater. I got the best choir. What are we trying to do? Somebody help me. Y'all put comments. I'm going to go back and read them after I get off here. What are we trying to do? Come on. What are we trying to do? What are we trying to stand for? The entertainment capital of the world. Oh, people got to know for what I got it going on over here. My people cannot sing your people any day of the week. Come on up in here. My keyboard player cannot play your keyboard player. My drum player can play better than your drum player. My tambourine. I got a tambourine ministry now. Let me bow my head on some of this stuff. Because I see what's going on. Hallelujah. I see what's going on in the house of God. I, 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 I see it. You all see it too. Y'all not blind. Don't look at me funny on this line. You're not blind. You see it too. And many of you on this replay, you know I'm telling the truth. Some of this might be comical. I don't have all this stuff stripped out. But you know I'm telling the truth. You know most churches now are becoming the entertainment capital of the world. I can't draw you on the gospel because I can't preach the gospel. Come on, because I'm not living right myself. Y'all don't hear me? So I can't preach the gospel. I can't tell you don't lay up with Johnny and don't lay up with Susan because I'm laying up too. Oh, God, I got to get off this thing. <laughs> I got to get off of here now. Because I walk in the door and you all may not come back. So if I can't preach the gospel, I can't tell you don't drink. I can't tell you don't do this because, see, I'm going to get my drink now. Y'all y'all don't hear me because I'm, I'm social. Come on. Some of y'all know I'm social too because I socialize with you. Oh, oh, God, did I say that? Did I really say that? Did, that, did I say that? You can't preach it because you are socializing with the people who you are supposed to be helping to reach Christ. So you can't preach that because I'm social with you and we take our drink together. Oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> The COVID is doing something. For, I don't know what it's doing for you all, but it's doing something for me. My, 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 my. So we can't preach that. So we make it the entertainment capital of the world. I'm going to draw you to this church. I'm not going to draw you with the word, but I'm going to draw you with my entertainment. 
Because I can, my church can entertain your church on any given day. With your eye, with, with our eyes closed, I cannot entertain you. Come on, come on. So we don't preach the word of God. We get entertainment going on. Well, let me help you out right now. God said, no, 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 no. Your church will never be, his church will never be known as entertainment capital of the world. What are you talking about, prophetess? We done got down so good now. We got all these flashing lights. I don't hear nobody. We got all these colorful lights going on in the house of God. People walk in the house of God, all these colorful lights, all this um, psychedelic lights. I don't hear nobody. All these colored lights going on. Then we bring out what we call the praise dancers, and they're not dressing like a praise dancer. I got to go. <laughs> Let me smile. Give me a smile, Lord. Let me smile at these young people. And we got all that going on in the house of God. And it's nothing but an entertainment capital. Come on, people. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. And I, I remember um, a couple of years ago, we was in a church um, in a city. I won't call the name of the city. But we had gone to this church, and the woman of God of prominence was there to deliver the word of God. And when she came out over the pulpit, the lights were dark. You couldn't see her, and she couldn't see us. And she boldly said, turn the lights up. We're not in a club. What's up with that? Why we got to go in the house of God and have the lights down low? I want to see who's sitting in the audience. I got to look at the people's faces. I can't preach in there and I can't see you. Whew, help me, Holy Ghost. But that's what's going on. That's what people are using now to draw people into the house of God. Some of these things are becoming a way of life for the church. People go to a club to see the light. Let me bookmark this. Let me bookmark this. God said, my church will not be known as entertainment capital of the world. If I got to get flashing lights, I'm sorry. If I got to get dancing lights, I'm sorry. If I got to get colorful lights, I'm sorry. Go to the club for that. Them dancers come on that floor, they entertain people in the club, they look all kind of ways. I want to say this right now. If you got praise dancers in your church, don't let them dress like the club. I'm helping somebody. <laughs> don't let them stand up there and say I'm dancing for the Lord and, and their dress is not appropriate. They shouldn't be up there, them skin tights on. I don't hear nobody. Come on. That's what's wrong now. We've gotten social with everything. Let them dance because I got to have me some young people and let them dance. I don't hear anybody. I tell you, the night is tight. This is for mature audiences. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody on milk. I'm talking to people that's able to chew a steak. And girls and men, women, boys, we are chewing steak tonight. I'm telling you, we're we having a ribeye. A good old ribeye steak. If that's not good enough, we throw a T-bone out here. But we shouldn't let them be in their dress any kind of way talking about, I'm a dancer for the Lord. God don't need a stripper. <laughs> God doesn't need strippers in the house of God. Holy as a hell. I'm not talking about with a long dress on. I'm not talking about with a prayer cap. I'm not talking about carrying a Bible, that big old family Bible. That's not holiness. Holiness, a life, holiness is a lifestyle. A life that's set apart, a life that's dedicated for the master's use. So if we're going to have the praise dancer, let them represent God. I don't see nothing wrong with a praise dancer, but let them be a praise dancer for God and not a stripper in the club. Do y'all hear me? Uh, pray for me, people. <laughs> I don't have popular things to talk about. The COVID-19 is doing something. It's waking us up. It's waking us up. It's waking us up. We all ought to be to the point that we say, Lord, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> Woo, shit, Lord, I see. Huh? Lord, I see. Church is not a social club. A church is what God has deemed it to be. I thought we were going to get through this tonight, but um, it doesn't look like it. If the Lord say so, he may change before I go before next Saturday. So we'll see. But this is tight. But it's right. I know it's tight. I know it's tight. But it's right. It's relevant. 
for the body of Christ. The COVID-19 is not here by accident. A lot of things have been taken away. People have lost their lives. But thank God, more people are living now. Come on, people. But while we're here, we need to let God talk to us. Come on. We need to, stay, we need to spend some time seeing what God wants you to get out of the COVID-19. That's what I say. God, what am I supposed to get out of this horrific virus? What am I supposed to learn? Hallelujah. Shaking the little bullshit. I ask him daily, what am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to get out here? One thing he let me know, talk to you. Hallelujah. Give the people what I give you. And that's what I do. I give you what God gives me. As I told my own brother today, it comes strong. I know it does. It comes hard. I told my own brother this today. He said, sis, that's okay. Be you. Do you. Get the word of God out. My chicken. Hallelujah. And that's where I am right now. We're getting ready to go because I don't want you all to say, well, I can't bother with that girl. Hallelujah. But I'm happy. I pray you are happy. Hallelujah. I pray you have been blessed by this word. And I'm inviting you to stay connected with us by visiting our website, www.francisdhardison.org. Please go and visit us on the website. We got new and exciting things that God is doing. In the midst of the COVID-19, God is blessing us. Yes, God is blessing us. And I know some of you have seen my shirt while I have been on here teaching I got my signature shirt. I am so happy. I've got my signature shirt. The hour of power. Hour of power. Hour of power. My signature shirt. And I, I'm so happy. I'm so elated. We got the link up on the screen. If you would like to pre-order a shirt, the signature shirt. Of the hour of power. You want people to know you belong to this hour of power. Information is on the screen. And you can go there. And you can pre-order your shirt. Because God told me. He said during this COVID-19. That I would not only survive. But that I would thrive. And I thank God. Many of you. Are not only surviving. But you are thriving. God is giving you new businesses. God is doing new things for you in your life. And what I like about in a season of a recession, in a season where it looks like everything is dying, everything is caving in, God is doing great things. God is doing great things. We're getting ready to go. Hallelujah. Stay connected to us by visiting my website www.francisdhardison.org.